and welcome to ThinkTech Asia, coming to you from downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Hong Jiang. I'm an associate professor of geography at University of Hawaii at Manoa. And today, we have a, a special topic. Uh, if uh, any of you have seen our previous shows, we did a few um, shows on the Asian communities in Hawaii. We did one in uh, Chinese in Hawaii, Filipinos in Hawaii, Japanese in Hawaii. And today, we have an expert on Koreans in Hawaii. Uh, so, Daki Lee Morabayashi um, is the uh, uh, expert and author on anything Korea, uh, anything <laughs> Korean in Hawaii. And Daki, thank you so much for joining us Thank here. you for inviting me. Mm -hmm. Um, so let me just give you a short um, bio of uh, uh, Daki. She was uh, an urban planner for over 30 years, and after that career, uh, then she turned her attention to um, uh, you know, community uh, involvement, especially relating to the Korean community. She was the um, vice chair uh, of uh, the Korean uh, Centennial Committee in 2003. And also, she's uh, been on uh, boards and committees of over 20 uh, organizations. I'm not going to name them. Uh, it's going to be a very long list. She also has also authored four books on Korean immigration to Hawaii and to the US. And uh, we can spend days probably talk about this uh, topic, yeah. but we just have uh, 50 minutes. So we, we get the basics out today uh, to start with, uh, let's start with uh, just the, the Korean people in Hawaii, when did they come? Uh, when did they first come here? Uh, what, what brought them here? Okay, uh, the first immigration group arrived here uh, January 13 of 1903. Uh, you may already cover the Chinese, Portuguese. You didn't cover Portuguese. Didn't, no, we didn't. Yeah. Well, we you didn't know Portuguese. Yeah. yeah, Chinese. Uh, 1852 Chinese came. Uh, 1878 Portuguese came, and 1885 Japanese came, and the fourth uh, ethnic group is a Korean arrived in 1903, and of course the latest one is Filipino arrived the end of uh, 1905. Mm -hmm. So Koreans arrived in 1903, not like the unlike the first four or three groups, uh, Koreans came to the territory of Hawaii. Chinese, Portuguese, and Japanese came to the kingdom of Hawaii. Uh, tell me the difference. Uh, well, it was the Kingdom of Hawaii. Uh -huh. It wasn't a part of the uh, U.S. Okay. Uh, but when Korean arrived, it was already a, a territory of the uh, U.S. Mm -hmm. Hawaii was a territory of the U.S. So it was uh, governed by the American uh, policies and acts and all those. So oh, okay. that's the difference between the earlier immigrant groups and the Korean groups. And how they arrived? Uh, as you may know, the Japanese laborers, sugar plantation laborers, were about dominating about 60% of total laborers in sugar plantations. And lo and behold, they were you know, un unhappy with whatever management. They went on mm -hmm. so-called the break, not the strike. They, it, couldn't, it was, they couldn't do the strike. So it they was actually a, strikes, they, right? Well, more or less it was a strike, but it was a stoppage. Okay. break uh, and uh, it was getting very prevalent and the uh, sugar plantation owners wanted to break that monopoly of Japanese laborers so they start looking at some other ethnic group and they said okay what about Korean so they contacted the Korean the minister in Korea Horace Allen uh, who sort of was contacted by the sugar plantation people and then he started persuading the Emperor Gojong mm -hmm. to send the Korean people to uh, Hawaii. At the beginning, Gojong was reluctant to send his people uh -huh. to, to foreign country right. uh, he didn't even know existed and uh, you know the Pacific Oceans away. So he was very re reluctant but Allen was very persistent and uh, he said, wait, by the way, uh, even Chinese cannot go there. That's right. The, uh, because uh, of an 1882 Act. Yeah. Exclusionary Act, the Chi it is correct statement, yet he <laughs> sort of twisted it. It says, even Chinese cannot go, but they are asking Koreans to come. Now so it's a privilege, that's right. right. <laughs> that's right. So 
Ko Jong said, okay, in that case, let's go. So he sort of granted, November 1902, he finally granted the Koreans to immigrate. Mm -hmm. So the, they start pub, the, issuing the passport in December of 1902, and the, the, you know, since then, about 7,400 people, total 7,400 people came from January 1903 to uh, August 1905, and it stopped. The reason why it was stopped was because of the, by then, Korean, the Joseon dynasty or the imperial, uh, Daehan imperial was more or less uh, going under the control, control of Japan. Mm -hmm. So Japanese merchant uh, people sort of was, uh, pressuring the Japanese government to stop Koreans, Korean immigration. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, one of the uh, Korean groups who immigrated to Mexico in 1905, they were having hard times, so Korean government, uh, okay, stopped the total mm -hmm. immigration. So that's how it stopped in August 1905. Uh, so basically, you had just about uh, over over two years. You have uh, uh, over seven thousand people coming here. That's right. Did they did they know that they come here to do hard labor? Oh yeah, okay. they knew because it was uh, well publicized, and uh, even uh, territory of Hawaii made a uh, you know advertisement mm -hmm. and put the posters here and there, and says uh, Hawaii is, has a great weather, uh, education free, English education, uh -huh. education in English free, uh -huh. and medical, and the house is all provided, and you know, kind of thing. So people sort of apply for it, and uh, 75, about 7,400 people total came. When they arrived here, the good weather actually turned out to be too hot. Oh, that's right, for the yeah, Koreans. That's uh, right. For, uh, so. Um, about 1,000 people went back, 1,000 of them went back to Korea, huh. and about 2,000 moved to the U.S. Oh. So by the time uh, 1910 census uh, taken, uh, there were only 4,500 mm -hmm. Koreans living in, in Hawaii. So after 1905, basically there were no new immigrants coming from Korea anymore? That's uh, correct. For for a long period of time, That's until correct. what time when the new Koreans started coming? Okay, um, as you may know, in California there was a anti-Japanese movement going on, and they're trying to uh, stop the Japanese immigration. As you, as, as Hawaii, including Hawaii, Hawaii was already Jap uh, U.S. territory, mm -hmm. so they couldn't come to here. When U.S. Uh, Japan had a gentleman's agreement stopping the immigration, yet U.S allowed the Japanese who are already here uh, bring their family members mm -hmm. as well as a new picture, new brides who will marry the you know those who are here mm -hmm. so that happened between 1908 and 1924 when the exclusionary act took place so that the uh, like a 16 somewhat year mm -hmm. period Japanese were able to come bring their family members as well as the picture brides came over here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, about 14,000 picture brides came you mean the, the to Korea, Hawaii. The Koreans were able to come? No, that was the Japanese came. Oh, okay, the Jap and the, on the other hand, Japan was colonized by Japan, I mean, you know, under Japanese, you know, colony. So 1910, when the Japan colonized Korea, Koreans became a citizen of Japan, so That's they were they were able to they come. were able okay. to come. So okay. so-called some members of families who were left behind okay. by the early immigrants, mm -hmm. as well as a so-called the new picture uh, the picture brides mm -hmm. about six six hundred eighty mm -hmm. were able to come with Japanese passport. Oh, okay, okay. The okay. earlier immigrants came with the uh, uh, imperial the. The, the, the Tehan Imperial passport, whereas the picture brides came with a uh, Japanese passport. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So that um, lasted till um, I, I know there was like a 1960s. Uh, there was a new wave. Of, that's uh, right. Uh, so 1924, virtually all Asian uh, immigrants uh, stopped. So there was it, it was under a quota system. So hardly any the Asians would come. 1950. 1965 new immigration act sort of abolished that quota system and uh, lots of uh, Asian 
people were able to come. That's when the so-called modern immigration were arriving. I see. Okay. Yeah. So um, um, I wanted to show some of the film photos that okay. you uh, you sent. Those were amazing photos. So the uh, control room. Can we? Uh, okay, so let's just go through the photos. So what is uh, what is this one? Okay, that's the picture of a uh, Korean National Association, which was organized in 1909. There were many uh, Korean organizations. As soon as they arrived, they organized organizations. Mm -hmm. And the 1909, 19 actually 1907, all these several like a 20 some organizations got together and have had a. Uh, Hanin uh, Hapsang Hyope, which is a United Korean uh, Association. Mm -hmm. And 1909, February, the, the organization in San Francisco and this uh, the or new organization in Honolulu got together as this under the Korean National Association became one, mm -hmm. one uh, organization in, in America, including Honolulu. So that's the picture of uh, the board members. Mm -hmm. I see, mm -hmm. I see. Let's look at the next photo. Ne next one is a, a Korean boarding school for boys, which was organized, which was opened by the Methodist Mission in Hawaii for Korean students, boys, actually. Uh, and this picture was taken in 1906. You could see the boys already wearing the uniform and the teachers and you know church members were sitting in the middle. The center, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, next one, please. That's the one. Picture bride. When picture bride arrived, usually group their friends came together. Mm -hmm. You know, so uh, many many picture bride pictures are group of three, and you know, and this is one of them. Picture bride groups. Uh, talk more about the picture brides. How did they work? Was it like they send the photo and then? Well, yep. from the photo, you get married to somebody here, and, and that's then right. That's right. Uh, when nineteen, let's say nineteen ten, people were already getting old. You know, those who arrived here in nineteen o three, nineteen o five, as mm -hmm. a twenty year old yeah, male, yeah. they are already like a twenty five. You know, getting old, thirty. Some were getting forty, and they mm -hmm. needed a wife, so they sent the pictures. Sometimes they borrow clothes, and you know, wearing nice, handsome pictures they send, <laughs> and the, and then Korea, you know, the go between were introducing photos. So the in a countryside woman. Mm -hmm. Like a 19, 16, 18, 19 mm -hmm. young woman says, "Okay, let's go." So mostly they came as a group, as a you know, two, three friends came together. Oh, and a funny, funny thing is when they arrived in the immigration office, and usually the the husband to be mm -hmm. come and pick them up, matching their photos, and you know, come them up. One of good, uh, any, I mean, interesting anecdote is. Two girls came together, and one didn't like, didn't care about her, mm -hmm. you know, husband to be. Uh -huh. So she refused. She oh, refused wow. to go out. So after three, four days, finally the other friend says, "Okay, let's switch." Oh, I see. I so, thought about switching. Yeah, they switched, <laughs> and you know that kind of story. Well, they're lots, happy. Of, lots, yeah, lots of uh, you know funny stories like that we oh, have. Wow, uh -huh. wow. Yeah. This woman who came here, were they coming here with a dream thinking that this, we're going to have a good life? That's right. Uh, rather than good life, you know, by the time they came over here, was a, Korea was under uh, Japan, Zem, Japanese, you know, uh, was a Jap, Jap, Japanese colony. Mm -hmm. So they were uh, educated a Japanese system and uh, they were sort of treated badly mm -hmm. in Korea. So. They came here more or less to get husbands who were Americanized, who has a better education, mm -hmm. and they wanted to come here to to get better educated themselves mm -hmm. and have you know have a better life. That's how they. Well, came. that's great, interesting stories. <laughs> uh, actually, it's time to take uh, our first short break, and then when we come back, we'll go through sure. more photos. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, this is uh, Think Tech Asia. I'm your host Hong Jiang, and we've been talking about Koreans in Hawaii. We'll be right back after this short break. I'm Jake Fidel. That's Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. 
And every Wednesday, we have Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We've been doing it for some time now, and we have some fantastic guests on there, unbelievable guests who give us insight into what is going on in a very complex, sometimes very confusing, sometimes very disappointing <laughs> area of, of progress in the state. So we love doing this. We love meeting them. We love talking to them. We love having their ideas out on the table. So maybe, just maybe, we can all make some sense of what's going on. Sharon, what do you Thing. I think that's absolutely correct. We enjoy we enjoy ourselves meeting with all these people <laughs> and hearing about the energy and the state of clean energy and hopefully we advance clean energy for the state. So it's terrific. Join us. Come okay, join it's us. every Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is Energy Day. Every energy Wednesday, Wednesday, four to five p.m. Hawaii, the state of clean energy here on Think Tech Hawaii. Energy we'll Wednesday. see you there. Hi, we're back. We're live. This is Think Tech Asia coming to you from downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Hong Jiang, and uh, we've been speaking with uh, Mrs. Daki Lee Murabayashi, uh, who is uh, our resident expert on Korean immigration and culture. So right before the break, we were going through those uh, really interesting, fun photos. So uh, we're going to continue with the photo. Let's get the next photo. That's the Women's, Korean Women's Relief Society photo which was organized in 1919, uh, April, uh, right after the news that uh, in Korea there was a March 1st movement against the Jap Jap Japan, so so-called independence movement, March independence movement. So the, over here the woman organized. Before this organization, actually there were many other organizations. They got together and said, let's work under one banner. So that's how they did the uh, Women's Re Relief Society, mm -hmm. and they were helping those who were hurt during the uh, independence movement in Korea, and they tried to support all the independence movement since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, next, next photo, please. Oh, uh, that's the sugar plantation workers uh, photos. You may have seen lots of Japanese laborers and uh, Chinese laborers, but this is the only. Actually, there's another photo with this, but they're the this is the only sugar plantation workers photo. This is around 1920s or late 10s. Uh, it's like a more or less a, the modern. They're, they're all young. And yeah. It seems to yeah. be happy. They're happy workers, uh -huh. yeah. That's wonderful. Uh, do uh -huh. we have more photos? Uh, that's the one uh, in front of a church building, church or part of school building, which was all, uh, in earlier you saw the school students. That's the... Uh, uh, Methodist Church in the compound. That's actually the Kalanimoku building where the, uh, right now, Beretania and Punchbowl, mm -hmm. right across from uh, state capital. Mm -hmm. That's the state building is there. That's the compound. In fact, uh, oh, last okay. January, we put the historic uh, site plaque right there to mm -hmm. commemorate the Korean boarding school as well as the Korean Methodist Church there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's great. The next one, please. That's the one, the uh, p people greeting the, the parade. Uh, 1914, when there was a fifth anniversary of Korean National Association, uh, Koreans were greeting with the American flag as well as the Korean flags. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, we have to, uh, oh, that one, one is a latter part in the 1920s and 30s and Korean culture. You know, second generation Koreans learned the Korean dancing and uh, trying to show the Korean part of Korean cultures. This is a sort of a wedding kind of a, a pic, a scene. Mm -hmm. you know, that. Great. So um, that's the photos that we have. Uh, the the uh, look like uh, it's a vibrant community, a lot of uh, connections, activities, sure. mm -hmm. uh, and these were all from the early immigrants. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. One question I want to ask you. So you have the early immigrants came in 1903, 05, and after, and then 1960s and 70s. Uh, I suppose a new group would be speaking the Korean language and um, uh, less uh, able to speak the English language. How were the, uh, the oh, yeah. two groups when get along? They, when they arrived like in the 1970s, 70, you know, 70s and 80s, they were very active on, on their own. Mm -mm. Uh, unfortunately, their English and skill wasn't, wasn't really uh, you know, uh, great. So on one hand, there was a second generation Koreans the, the descendants of the first immigrant, they're trying to get together and they're having a hard time. Mm. And 
each other accused who the true Koreans are, uh -huh. and, you know. So they had a uh, little difficult time. Actually, there were two Chamber of Commerce. The original Chamber of Commerce was in the 1940s, the, the second generation of first immigrant. And this uh, latter part of a uh, new immigrant group organized their own Chamber of Commerce. In fact, I became the first president that combined the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, when did, that when was in 1987. Oh, wow, yeah. that, that's a, that's yeah, a great that's symbol. A, yeah, so uh, because of uh, you know, bilingual ability, I had uh -huh. to put together this group. Talk about your own experience a little bit. Oh, <laughs> I was born in North Korea, Pyongyang, and moved to South Korea in 1946. Oh, wow. And educated in Korea and went to uh, UC Berkeley to continue my education. And got master's degree in sociology from uh, UC Berkeley. And I was getting ready to return to Korea to teach in my school. Mm -hmm. And I became, I mean, I learned the words city planning. Uh -huh. It was the first time in my life I came across with the words city planning. Uh -huh. I was a sociologist and a, a sort of a specialized in the urbanization of Korea because Korea was an agrarian society mm -hmm. and becoming an urban you know, country. So I said, hey, what was this? That's how I got interested mm -hmm. in and then I decided to stay and study more. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I got a degree in urban, urban planning. And you came to Hawaii, what, what then, time? So I finished 66, 68 at USC, got a degree in urban planning, and was hired by Honolulu City Planning Department in 1968, mm. and that's how I came. That's and just prior to that, I married a second, third generation Japanese born in Honolulu and married in California. That, that's where your uh, last that's name is, Mar That's Bayashi. correct, that's yeah. correct. Uh -huh. And your, your, your maiden last name is Lee, right? Lee, that's right. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> now, now I can piece things together, yeah. Um, so, so you, uh, because of your education and because, of, because you came from Korea, Mm -hmm. uh, then you became this kind of a connection point between the two, two That's groups. That's correct. Yeah. That's correct. And plus, uh, as you know, urban planning, city planning, it has uh, lots of uh, political, uh, you know, uh, connections. I mean, had to work with the political leaders like that. So I got to know a lot of you know political communities here. And uh, while I was c studying the community, I sort of was interested, hey, by the way, there was a Korean immigrants, where were they? We have a Chinatown, we yeah, have a yeah. Moiledi Japanese town, mm -hmm. more or less, and where were the Koreans were living? That's how sort of uh, back in my mind, mm -hmm. uh, I interest grew on the Korean immigration. But because I was working full time, mm -hmm. I couldn't pay attention to that at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. But after I sort of retired, I devoted myself to uh, Korean immigration history here. Mm -hmm. um, how uh, were you initially uh, received by the older uh, generation of uh, Korean immigrants? Uh, you, you, you'll be considered to, the, to be the newer uh, part, I suppose, the uh, part of the newer immigrant. Right? Uh, I, I, was, I was accepted well, well mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I guess, uh, you know, they were more or less curious you know, Korean mm -hmm. woman in city planning and mm -hmm. uh, educated in America and all that. So I had no problem. I have lots, lots of uh, second generation Korean friends here, mm -hmm. and we get together quite well. And you know, yeah, that uh, that sounds great. So how many Koreans there uh, there are here? Right now we have a little over twenty thousand, but. In a census, that's a census show. In a, uh -huh. As you know, census is a self-definition. Census, right. it, you know, ethnicity is a self-definition. So they're mixed group. There are lots of mixed people too. What's the typical mix? Uh, uh, I mean, you, you can name it. I mean, because mixed I'm, with everybody. My, my understanding of, uh, for example, I know more about the Chinese and when they came, they could they're bring Hawaiian. their children, uh, right. their, their wives here, they, they married a lot of Hawaiians. That's correct. What about the Koreans? Uh, some, some married the Hawaiians. We, in fact, uh, there is a newspaper, you know, article saying, I'm a ha Korean marrying a Hawaiian. I'll be responsible for this family and all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there were, uh, you know, Hawaiian families as well. Uh, when they, the children were dating Japanese, of course, they were all mad at the children. but. 
<laughs> like any other ethnicity, oh, their their parents are mad at their children, you uh -huh. know, dating with that other uh, uh, other ethnic group. Anyway, so uh -huh. they went through that period. So right now it's all mixed. I yeah. see. Uh -huh. I see. But it's uh, less than two percent of total population anyway. Mm -hmm. So when they first got here, they were uh, recruited directly because of the, the plant. uh, plantation. Mm -hmm. um, Afterwards, what did they do? do uh, is there a particular kind of career that they move into? Well, when they arrived here, the, and uh, like uh, 10 years later like that, Hawaii as a whole was becoming a sort of an industrial, I mean, getting away from the sugar plantation economy. Mm -hmm. You know, had a small business and, you know, trading and going on. So. Obviously, Koreans left the sugar plantations, and they have their own small stores, and some had a carnation farm, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like that. So there, but when the Japanese, I mean, Korean had an independence movement started, lots of women wanted to raise the funds to send to Korea and Manchuria to support the Korean independence military. Mm -hmm. So they were doing quite a bit of a trading or business of selling kimchi and uh, you know codfish mix and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So they were very diligent. And they, lots of women had a rooming houses for the old, the earlier immigrants who were living here without the families. There's a lots of a rooming houses. Mm -hmm. that's, that's interesting. Um, Talking about rooming houses, uh, where where did they live? Uh, I, I I know now people talk about uh, uh, Korea Tang, Korean Tang, whatever you call it, Yehan Rulu. Well, actually, the 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 modern immigrants came uh, because of a you know lack of English skills. They more or less went in their small business, and you may know the so-called international market in Waikiki mm -hmm. was dominated by Japanese small business people. Mm -hmm. And uh, after sort of a, you know they moved out of the international market, Waikiki side, they all had their own small stores in mm -hmm. Kemoku Street side. Mm -hmm. that's, in, that's why the uh, comedian Frank Lima says uh, rather than Kemoku, it says Korea Moku. That's how the name <laughs> became Korea Moku Street. Uh, I know, Moku Street. And in fact, uh, when we celebrated uh, our centennial in 2003, we picked the, uh, the, uh, the power park on King Street and just off the Kiamoku Street, we uh, put the, the Centennial Memorial over there. Mm -hmm. So more or less that became the focus of the Centennial uh, uh, Korean town too. Mm -hmm. um, so you talk about uh, the Korean small businesses uh, were uh, dominating at the international market in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. they, they, were, they were just selling small things? All and, small things, uh, t-shirts okay. and trinkets and the jewelries okay. and all that sort of thing. H how, how did they become dominating? Uh, Oh, the, because uh, they're the, hardworking, the they're hardworking okay. group, and uh, okay. they're determined to have, you know, and educate their children, mm -hmm. give a better education, okay. so they yeah. really worked hard. Mm -hmm. So when they started to move, uh, congregate around the Kiamoku, can you describe, uh, you know, especially if people who can watch this show uh, from anywhere in the world, right? <laughs> they may not have visited the, this Kiamoku Korean town area in Honolulu. If you do come, then do visit. But can you describe uh, the features, natures of that area? Well, right now there are uh, s small uh, Samsung Plaza, which has uh, several stores inside, very small. Mm -hmm. And there is a Sarabo restaurant that has a little uh, small plaza also, has a restaurant and uh, little sp supermarkets there, and uh, you know, lots of restaurants around there. And of course, the other side of the ever side of Kamoku Street is a uh, Walmart and all that. Yes, so they cannot right. go on that side, but mm -hmm. it's more or less on here. And uh, uh, behind that, the Kamoku Street side, ever side, I mean, Diamond Head side, there are some Korean businesses also. Uh, do Korean uh, people also live around there? Uh, not in Kamoku per se, but it, in Makiki side, the uh, you know, condo apartment buildings mm -hmm. and uh, the other side. But right now they're more or less, uh, you know, spread out like mm -hmm. a Mililani and a Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. Salt Lake, there are all the condos, the Korean people living there, and uh, Mililani, Hawaii Kai, they're all over. Uh -huh. um, uh, two questions uh, to follow up. One is, uh, the, in terms of both of the uh, earlier and, and later uh, groups uh, mm -hmm. of immigrants, 
uh, in terms of language, um, Korean language connection and also connection with the Korea uh, as a country. Um, mm -hmm. How much is there still a connection there? Well, as on? you know, the, the earlier generation, I mean second generation, third generation or earlier immigrants, uh, they hardly spoke Korean, and although they went language school, but mm -hmm. if you don't practice language, you, you don't, you know, you lose it. But when the Korean wave started, like a, you know, at the end of uh, 19, like a early beginning of 2000, you know, everybody started learning Koreans again, and you know, drama, Korean dramas, K-pops, and all that sort of thing. So lots of uh, third generation people learn Koreans, and there's a. Um, the actors fan clubs, oh, not only I, by oh. not only by Koreans, but lots of uh, local people join the and they they make a trip and to visit the studios where the drama is <laughs> oh, uh, drama is you know <laughs> taped and all that. So it's it's a quite a bit. So uh, and the people who I mean this the modern the immigrants who came after 1970s they. Sort of able to speak some Koreans. So their children mm -hmm. speak Korean, so there are hardly any problems right now. They they can communicate. Um, uh, this uh, Korean wave you just mentioned. How mm -hmm. did that come about? Korean wave. I always claim that Hawaii is the center of uh, uh, the origin place, original place of Korean wave because uh, nineteen. Early part of '90s, and uh, our Korean TV station started showing Korean dramas. Mm -hmm. At that time, actually, they didn't even have English subtitles. Oh. But a lot of people watched that. Oh, really? <laughs> and uh, they, after the the when they saw the episode, they usually call me, and they wanted to know exactly what happened. What did they that say? <laughs> they they more or less knew the overall storylines, but they didn't want to know exactly what they said and all that sort of thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it was very, and as you know, there was a very popular Daejanggum that uh, the the culinary uh, tr historical drama. That one was uh, uh, aired without subtitle. Oh wow! And I get the call. I I mean <laughs> every day, and that's I had funny. to explain. And that's uh, actually that's how it started uh, here. But actually. That uh, so-called the general uh, Korean wave, we had over already here because of the TV station, the local drama club was formed, their fan club was formed, and I know people from all different ethnic background uh, do they belong to, to the, the uh, movie. Do they, be they belong to the Korea K drama. It, means a Korean drama, K-drama yeah. clubs. There are many of them here. I have been curious. Uh, this is related to the Korean culture, I believe. How come the uh, people were so fascinated by the Korean drama? I mean, there are dramas made everywhere. The U.S., uh, you know, all different countries made the drama. You know, Why Korean drama? 1970s and 80s, Japanese dramas were very popular here. Okay. Uh, I guess you weren't here, so you That's don't know. Right, but yeah. so we all watch the Japanese dramas, uh -huh. particularly historical drama and some, you know, modern dramas. And they were sort of tired of that, and it sort of died down. Then all of a sudden, Korean dramas coming with the fancy houses, fancy clothes, uh -huh. you know, fashion, and all that. That's how it picked up. Oh, mm -hmm. that's that's interesting. Uh -huh. um, I know this kind of a K drama, um, kind of fantasy, and also uh, uh, become really s spread to U.S. mainland. It, that, a lot of people well, watching it's, it. it's already spread, and now it's going to China too. Remember, mm -hmm. just just a couple of months ago, the 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 man from Other Star or something mm -hmm. was very popular in China, and. Uh, the beer and chicken were all of sort of, you know, <laughs> fried chicken and fact, in fact, uh -huh. or you know, going selling well and all that. So it's not only the Korea and America situation; it's all over. And uh, they claim that the Korean dramas were more or less family values, and whereas American dramas more. Um, you know, fighting kind of thing. That's what I want to hear more th about. That's right. You think it's because of people wanting to go back to some kind of a wholesome that's family correct. value. That's and correct. That's correct. And and uh, they show lots of uh, historical drama. Yeah. And uh, people start learning some history through that drama also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, fascinating story. So time for us to take a, <laughs> another break. Uh, this is uh, Think Tank Asia, and I'm your host, Hong Jiang. We've been speaking about 
Koreans in Hawaii. Well, we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Dr. Rafi. Every week, I'm right here at Think Tank Hawaii, 3 p.m. on Mondays. My show is Bards as Bio Briefings. What do we do here? Well, we watch sperm swim. We see if they catch anybody. We check out the latest biosimilars. You know, the kind that, uh, what was his name? The guy with the bicycle? Uh, I guess we forgot his name, but he was taking EPO and other human growth factors. We'll be talking about human growth factors. You want to know where to get some? Maybe I'll tell. Anyway, you can catch me, as I said, every week right here, Monday, 3 p.m., Think Tech Hawaii, Dr. Rafi. You can also find me on Twitter, BioInfo. Hi, we're back, we're live, and this is uh, Think Tech Asia. I'm your host, Hong Jiang. We've been speaking with uh, Mrs. Daki Lee Morabayashi, who is the resident expert on Korean culture and immigration in Hawaii. Uh, fascinating history, and um, I wanted to go uh, have you look back at this uh, 111 years of a Korean immigration and the history here in Hawaii. And look at, uh, well, who are the notable Koreans here? I'm sure there are well, many. There are several aspects of notable. The first comes to my mind is uh, our Chief Justice, uh, former Chief Justice Moon Wan Moon was a third generation Korean. Mm -hmm. And uh, Patrick Lee, the education uh, superintendent, was a second generation Korean, Patrick Lee Hamamoto. And Honolulu Police Chief Lee Donahue is a second generation Korean as well. And currently, Senate uh, President Dana Mukaro Kim is a third generation Korean. Mm -hmm. So, although the Korean population was uh, less than 2% all throughout the 111 years of history, we had uh, our share of uh, great leaders in you know, legal side as well as political side and education side. And I think they, uh, it, it is because of uh, Korean families over here really devoted to uh, education of their children that that sort of shows the that's the results of that efforts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of economic uh, status of uh, Korean people compared to the the, the other kind of ethnic groups. Uh, how, how would you rank the Koreans in terms of economic uh, Interestingly, status? 1970 census showed the Korean family was the highest income group. Mm. But that 1970s uh, showing the, the earlier generation Koreans, not the new generation. So oh. new generations, uh, yeah, is ma many of them are struggling, but they're, okay. they're working hard. So I suppose they're that getting that's their, understandable oh, yeah, because of the new yeah. So right now, nowadays, there is no uh, the economic rankings kind of thing, so we cannot tell. But they're all doing, you know, they're all sending. Many of them trying to send their children to private schools mm -hmm. and the mainland universities and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, among the Chinese immigrants, uh, early immigrants, there was a, um, a Sun Yat-sen who actually was connected, who was a founder of modern China. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I suppose there's oh, yeah. a, a oh, yeah. parallel story That's among right. the Korean. Yeah. The, the the founding president of Sun Man Mi, uh, uh, the Sun Man Mi of a Republic Korea, lived here in Honolulu from 1913 to 1939 for, for 25, years. 25 years. Mm -hmm. In fact, 25 years in Hawaii, he sort of uh, prepared himself to become the president in 1948. And so uh, he became the, actually he became the president of a provisional government in 1919. And then later on, actually, the Republic of Korea was established. He became the founding president of Republic of Korea in 1948, and he resigned from the presidency in 1960. Uh, like a month after he resigned, he came back to Honolulu. Oh, wow, interesting. So he lived here for another five years. Altogether, he actually lived in Hawaii 30 years 30 of years. his 90-year uh, lifetime. Oh wow, that that's really amazing. Yeah. So uh, one of these shows later on, we'd like to come and have you come back and talk and talk <laughs> just about this that's particular right. um, right. uh, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Lee yeah. Uh, yeah, right. and his life here. But right now, maybe you can give us just a brief overview of uh, what did he do here. I mean, he must be involved he, in politics. Yeah. By the time he arrived here, 1913. Uh, uh, 
uh, February 1913, he already had a doctorate degree from Princeton University. Mm -hmm. So he was well known in the community, and he was the, he was appointed as the principal of that uh, Korean boarding school for boys. So he started out as an educator over here, and later he organized the Korean YMCA, and 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 he organized the Korean uh, Christian Church, which is on uh, Lilia Street. Mm -hmm. So he did the uh, he did the education part. Uh, after he became the president of Korean boarding school, principal of Korean boarding school for boys, he also organized the Korean girls seminary and Korean Christian Institute. So he all throughout, he, he was an educator. Mm. And meanwhile, he also organized the Korean Christian church out of a Methodist, uh, you know, Methodist church mission. So he organized the independent church, with, which is a Korean Christian church on Lilia Street. And 1921, he organized sort of a, a, a Dong ji uh, Association to support his uh, political a, a activities, mm -hmm. diplomatic activities. So he organized the three distinct groups over here. In fact, I one of my books are on those three organizations, mm -hmm. published in 2008. Interesting. Mm -hmm. um, a little later, we'll have, have you give the titles mm -hmm. of okay. your books. Uh, but in terms of what you said, uh, uh, Mr. Ri um, prepared himself to lead Republic of Korea here. Uh, did he prepare himself in terms of gaining more experience or um, you know, grow more of his political visions and connections? What about financial? All of those. You know, all of those? Okay. Yeah, because one of the reasons why he came over here is because at that time, uh, Hawaii was has the most Korean populated uh, in in American mm -hmm. states, mm -hmm. so it's obviously he came here to serve uh, get the Korean support, and he prepared himself and doing all this uh, education work and you know see here and although he lived here but he was going back and forth the mainland and mm -hmm. uh, other places so he prepared himself to to lead the. Uh, you know, become a diplomatic uh, polit politician. Uh -huh. um, the, va the fact that he spent 30 years of his life here, I wonder whether that contributed to a good relationship between Korea and the U.S. Because he, I mean, not only Hawaii, in to total he lived more than actually 30, 36 somewhat years in oh, America. In so uh -huh. uh, Korea and the U.S., the relationship, there was mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know, hate and love kind of situation oh, diplomatically, really? politically too. Mm -hmm. So there is a uh, the lot of uh, good tre uh, treaties were made during mm -hmm. his uh, presidentship. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hawaii is a dear place for him as well as the Koreans, you know, who supported him. Mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. Uh, now I hear this other story about the Koreans and uh, um, having learned about the Chinese side. Uh, Hawaii is connected to uh, the, the modern founding of two major nations, uh, the China and Korea, mm -hmm. which, is, uh, which is amazing. <laughs> really speaking, well, not, not right. in the yeah, U.S. also, right. the Obama yeah. is from, from Hawaii. So, it's probably a time for Hawaii to shine in the international <laughs> stage. Yeah, You're that's right. fascinating. <laughs> um, early on, you talk about uh, uh, Hawaii being the center of a Korean population. Um, at that time. At that time. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I kind of diverge a little bit from our original topic. Where, where is the, the most uh, Korean uh, population? Right now, it's a Los Angeles, it's a million population, and okay. New York is another, Chicago is a major, major yes. cities in okay. the uh, in U.S. It's a similar story about the Koreans, Chinese. Yeah, Koreans is a small number mm -hmm. in Hawaii. Interesting. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Um, in terms of uh, uh, coming back to Koreans in Hawaii, uh, it looked like they are well organized, still a lot of cultural organizations. What are the key ways the uh, Korean people keeping the cultural identity and cultural uh, Cultural identity, presence? as far as the culture itself, that we have a Halaham Dance Studio, which was organized uh, shortly after 1950s, and which has a 60-year history. And Halaham passed away in 2000. Two or 2001. Since then, Mary Jo Freshly, the Caucasian who used to be a teacher at the Kamehameha School, is heading that studio. Mm -hmm. And this this studio, I believe, is the 
oldest, longest surviving Korean dance studio outside Korea, and headed by oh. Caucasian. Uh, that, that, that's interesting. That director. And it yeah. speaks about Hawaii being the mild, mild that's That's correct. Pop. That's yeah. correct. That's that's the part of it. And we have uh, a Korean American Foundation, which is a continuing uh, body of a uh, Korean Centennial Committee. There's a Korean United Society. There's a Korean Women's Korean American Women's Club. There is mm -hmm. a, another dance studio, and there are lots of uh, and uh, artist association. There are lots of uh, you know cultural groups as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, you, you early on talk about the Methodist Church and, and Catholic Church. In terms of religion, uh, my understanding is that Koreans uh, were uh, mostly kind of um, probably Buddhist believers. Uh, Traditionally. Some, some, well, did they get converted into um, Christianity after they, they arrived here? The, it's interesting, uh, earlier when the, uh, the American minister Horace Allen was uh, contacted by uh, plantation uh, owners, he turned into the American uh, businessman over there, Dashler, named by uh, na named Dashler. He had a hard time recruiting Koreans because they, they didn't know where Hawaii was and all that. Mm -hmm. But in Incheon area, there is a the Reverend Jones who headed the uh, Incheon Methodist Church over there, Nettie Church, as well as he was a superintendent of uh, that Gyeonggi uh, area. He said he told the, I mean, suggested the church members to go Hawaii. It's a mm -hmm. good weather and education is free and the medical is provided and mm -hmm. all that. So lots of uh, uh, church members came over here. Mm -hmm. Although Korea was still dominantly a uh, traditional Buddhist country, but lots of uh, Methodist people, mm -hmm. church, and as well the priest, Presbyterian church members came. Mm. So when they came here, so-called the Christian community, they get together more or less, uh, and the uh, church was church played uh, quite a role in the Korean community, like uh, the temples, mm. the Jewish community, mm. you know, to play the same thing. And that, that's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, today, synagogue, like a synagogue, is to. Uh, the Jewish, the Jewish people, people. Uh -huh. the churches for Korean, uh -huh. and let's say Buddhist temples for Chinese, and uh -huh. you know, Shinto shrine is for Japanese. It, yeah. it carries on. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that's interesting. Um, let's have you talk about uh, your books. You've uh, written four books about Korean immigration in Hawaii and in the U.S. Can you actually give the us first some? book I published in the nineteen ninety uh, early nineties was a uh, light light stand of uh, Jeju. Island, which is the southernmost island uh, of Korea, uh, that's a very interesting phenomenon. Before the modern uh, lighthouses, mm -hmm. actually small villages and uh, they had their own light post oh, set up. Oh, uh -huh. So even one small light, you know, guiding mm -hmm. the the vessels coming in. That uh -huh. so I found there are about eighteen of them in, left in nineteen early nineteen eighties. Mm -hmm. I mean early nineties. So I trace them all that and I published on that. Uh -huh. um, and uh, on Co uh, Korean immigration, well, it's uh, 2003 I published the Centennial History of Koreans, how they lived in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, 2008, the, the book on the Korean Christian Church and other things, other organizations headed by uh, Dr. Sung Man mm -hmm. And uh, an another one, actually, I published a timeline of a Korean immigration, Koreans in America. Mm -hmm. That's a bilingual, uh, shows the historical timelines and all that. The latest one is actually um, published last year, uh, Centennial History of Korean National Association. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And right now, I'm actually writing the 30-year history, 30 30-year what did Dr. Seungman Lee did in Hawaii? Oh, that's It'll be great. Yeah, we, we, we need to have sometime. you back at uh, some some later yeah. time to talk yeah. about that. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, I uh, do want to have you talk about the Immigration Research Institute. But before that, I want to go back to one question. That is, uh, uh, you know, looking back now, over 100 years. 111 um, years, 111 exactly. 111 years, so that's, a, that's a good number, 111, right? <laughs> uh, do people, in, Korean people in Hawaii still identify themselves as Koreans or as Hawaiians, as Americans? 
Korean Americans. Korean Americans. Well, some people they say Korean. Okay, you know, okay. who those still have a Korean nationality, citizenship, they, they uh, okay. consider themselves. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, but the, the older um, generation of uh, immigrants? They're Korean Americans. So, so when they, um, and here's one question. Let's see um, if you were a, uh, oh, anybody who's a third generation, fourth generation uh, Korean immigrant, go into Waikiki and see people walking on the street as a Korean. Uh, tourists coming there, do they feel closer connection with that person because oh, sure. that's, a, that's Korean? That, you know, it's, it's not only Koreans, you know, this Asian people are very comfortable in Hawaii because, uh, you know, all these Oriental populations, mm -hmm. I mean, Asian populations, so it's not only Koreans and all that. But more and more people coming to Hawaii since uh, 2008, visa free kind mm -hmm. of situation. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, because we celebrated the uh, centennial, so Koreans know a lot about Korean, uh, the centennial history in mm -hmm. Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So they sort of connect to it. And although, you know, they find the second, third generation Korean Americans speak to them in mm -hmm. few words, Koreans, they love it, you know, that, as that, uh, all the other that, that's ethnic great. groups. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so this uh, uh, Korean Immigration Research Institute, uh, you, you, are, you are heading uh, that institute? Yeah, that was just organized a couple months ago because a lot of people say, hey, you need an organization and, and you, know, you got to recruit some people because mm -hmm. uh, after you die, who's going to do this kind of thing? <laughs> so we organized a group of uh, professors and mm -hmm. I organized it and we're trying to do sort of Raise. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I see. Yeah. Continue basically continue yeah, the, right. the research. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, running out of time, and sure. uh, this is a great discussion. Uh, this is a think tank uh, show on Asia, and I'm your host Hong Jiang, and we've been speaking with uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Ducky Lee Murabashiashi. <laughs> I always uh, need to read this to make sure it's right on Koreans in Hawaii. And um, I want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is, uh, again, Hong Jiang at Think Tech Asia. I'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you and goodbye.